And we are lucky enough for the third straight week on this radio show to get the play-by-play announcer of the Commander's Game, uh, who will call it on television, on the show. Uh, and this week, that is Andrew Catalan from CBS Sports. Uh, Mr. Catalan, how are you, sir? What's up, Craig? How are you, man? I'm great. I'm, I'm talking about football in Washington. This is the best my life has been. Well, that's not true. I have things going on outside of football in Washington. <laughs> but, I mean, professionally, this is the best my life has been for eight years. What do you think I'm doing? You know, it's funny because we get the, the newspaper and, and clippings sent to us every day. And when I first read the first batch of them this week, everything was about how the environment's different. Sell out crowds. People are happy. I'm like, you know what? The Clippings didn't read this way when I came <laughs> to Washington for the Titans game last year. So it's nice to read these Clippings. Oh, God, what a game that was. That was the the one like, hey, maybe Carson's still, I don't know, is this a disaster? Hey, is Deami Brown good now? That game. Who who could forget? Yeah, that was the game. Yep, Who could forget? The one. Um, so let's ta- let's start there though, because you obviously call games all around the league. That's that's the job. Uh, you know, when you're a national play-by-play guy, which is the only kind that the NFL has uh, on the television side. And when you compare what FedEx Field has been in all of your experiences coming here to most NFL stadiums, like where did it rank? In terms of atmosphere, I mean, it's easy to be like, oh, it's the worst. I mean, was it? Is it in a category with a couple of others that are pretty nondescript? Like, what was FedEx Field like, and then what are you expecting it to be on Sunday? I would say the times I've been there have been not memorable. I wouldn't rank it as the worst, but there was just nothing that really stood out to me about it. Um, And, you know, for all the reasons that we know. Um, but I am really fired up for this game on Sunday. I mean, I think that Washington's comeback gives the game a little more juice. I do the Bills preseason games uh, for the last eight years, so I know them really well, and they are a legit good team. And I love what Ron Rivera said this week. He said it's a measuring stick game for them. And to me, it's an absolutely winnable game for the commanders as well. I mean, Buffalo has looked a little bit uneven so far. Um, I know they're the favorite, but uh, I think that Washington, with the confidence they have, that they're absolutely going to give us a really good game and, and could win this game on Sunday. I know at this point in the week, like obviously you haven't had the meetings with the teams yet and all that kind of good stuff, but but obviously you and your crew have started to talk, and I'm particularly interested in the thoughts of your new partner, Matt Ryan, and his thoughts on Sam Howell. What have the discussions been around the Washington quarterback so far this week? I don't want to speak for Matt because I haven't gotten in depth on on Sam Howell, but what um what he did say, which I thought was interesting, is that when he's looking at this Buffalo defense, he sees um, what he used to go against in Carolina with Ron Rivera and with Sean McDermott, and you know I think the Washington defense is an extension of that. So I I'm really looking forward to not only hearing Matt's thoughts on Sam Howell, but also like how he would attack the defenses because he played them so many times when he was with Atlanta. I mean, Matt is really, you know, he's only two games into this, but he gives you such a unique perspective since he's just off the field. And look, I can't again speak for Matt, but I'm impressed with Sam Howell. I mean, I watched the (laughs) entire game last week. I thought he looked great. Some of those throws were big time. I think he's finally got some weapons around him. Brian Robinson running hard. I mean, I think there's a lot to like about this Washington team right now offensively. Without question. Um, and I think it's well, one, we had Matt on the podcast this summer and he was amazing. I'm lucky enough to do a podcast with one of his former teammates, which certainly helps. But that fresh off the field perspective, it, you're, you're so right. And I think fans will get to see that uh, if they haven't heard your crew call a game yet in, in the two games that you guys have had this season. Um, it's it's really, really good. And I'm excited for everyone to get to hear it. Um, but as far as the the defensive thing. I think the irony is, Andrew, that the Buffalo defense is more of what Ron's defense used to be in Carolina than the Washington defense because Jack Del Rio has taken such a big role and it really is Jack's defense. But when you talk about this Buffalo defense, where would you rank it compared to some of these defenses they've had in past years? I've actually now done a couple of hits with Buffalo stations and we've had some Buffalo folks on. And it seems like they, you know, Milano's still what he is. This D-line, the opinions seem to be mixed, and it seems like people think the secondary may be a step slower than it used to be, having called you know, and been around this team in the preseason. How would you rank this Buffalo defense compared to where, where it's been over the last five years since they've been on this run with Allen? 
First off, I agree with you about Jack putting his own spin on the Washington defense. It's definitely not the same, but I, I think some of the principles are there, and I think it'll be interesting to hear Matt attack it. But there's no doubt that Del Rio has done, put, you know, put his stamp on that D. Uh, as far as the Buffalo D, I kind of agree with what you just said. I mean, I think to me the big thing about them is they're a little bit deeper than they've been in the past, but that doesn't necessarily mean – that they're more talented than they were in the past. I mean, you know, Leonard Floyd was a really nice addition for them. Uh, he's looked really good over the summer, and that's carried over early into the season. Um, I think the back end, you know, if you want to tell me they're a step slower, that I mean, they're not going to tell you that. But, but yeah, the, 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 I don't think that Tredavious White is back to where he was pre-injury yet. You know, Poir, Poyer and Hyde are in their 11th year now. Uh, but I would never count those guys out. And, you know, I think that when you got the head coach now calling the defense, which is the case with Sean McDermott, it's a little different. They're they're a little more attacking than they were in the past. They're going to send some more guys. It's just it's, the mindset seems to be a little different now with McDermott calling the plays. So that, that's a, that's one change from the past for sure for Buffalo. Do you think also around this Bills team that there's kind of a a greater sense of urgency that they haven't broken through yet? Like even Cincinnati, while they haven't won a Super Bowl, they've gotten there. And as those three teams, along with Kansas City, of course, being the the other one, have had tremendous success and wound up battling in the playoffs. Like what what have you found is kind of the, the overall season theme, if you will, in Buffalo, having been around them in the preseason? And how is that impacting their season so far? Yeah, I, I think that, you know, you hear people say their window is closing. Um, you know, I don't think it's closed for sure. And, and closing is, is still a little strong. I mean, they're still a really good team. And Josh Allen, to me, is still an elite quarterback. Um, you know, they have some new wrinkles this year. This rookie tight end, Dalton Kincaid, he's going to continue to be more and more a focal point of their offense, in my opinion. Their offensive line is okay, and I think that's – Really, to me, the big key in this game Sunday is how does the offensive line hold up against the Washington front? Um, but, but yeah, I mean, look, things change quickly in, in football, in the NFL. I mean, you're seeing just the, it's hard to stay at the top. I had Cincinnati last week. I think they're going to have a tough time this year. I mean, I, I think it's hard to go to the Super Bowl and the AFC Championship game and then just say, okay, we're going to turn the switch and do it again. And there's a little bit of that for Buffalo, but maybe more of a – bad taste in their mouth because of the way their seasons have ended so you know i think it's still a motivated group and to me craig the big thing about buffalo they love being in the underdog role last year even the year before they were kind of a trendy pick now some people are saying eh windows closing miami's good you know all these other quarterbacks in the afc that feeds into what sean mcdermott wants to tell his guys that hey people aren't picking us again we're the underdog again that's that's what the fans like. That's what this team likes. So I think that will help them this year. Andrew Catalan, CBS Sports, with us here on the Hoffman Show. On the Washington side of it, you mentioned the key to the game uh, could be Buffalo's offensive line versus this vaunted Washington front. Like When you watch this this group, there's four guys there, obviously. Is there one in particular that, that fascinates you or impresses you more than the others? I mean, Deron Payne did something that I don't think I've seen in a bit of in a long time in Denver. He, I mean, he had a personal three and out. I mean, he, he forced a three and out all by himself uh, on one of the drives for Denver. I, that, that, to me, like, jumped out at me. And I love what Montez Sweat said. He said it's, quote, an Olympic gold medal race to the quarterback. I think these guys push each other. Obviously, a couple of them are looking for contracts. I think it's a really, really talented, dangerous group that's going to make noise throughout the year. And then last but not least, you kind of hint, well, I guess I got two more for you, one game specific and then one kind of circling back uh, all the way around to the environment side of it. Um, But you you said you think Buffalo is going to have a tougher time, like they're the favorite, but, you know, they're going to have a tougher time than than a lot of people think. You seem to sense like a real opportunity for the commanders here. Like, you know, you're picking the game. I don't know how you feel about, you know, making predictions on games that you're calling or, you know, you're calling the game. I don't know how you feel about making uh, predictions on games that you're calling, but like what kind of chances do you give Washington of, of actually doing this? Uh, compared to the, oh, well, maybe they'll keep it close, which seems to be the overriding national narrative this week. Yeah, I mean, I think people are saying, oh, yeah, they're 2-0, and but who have they beaten? Uh, you know, what they did last Sunday uh, in Denver, I, again, I know Denver is not going to be the 72 Dolphins. They're already not. But, 
Uh, I still was really impressed by that. I think Howell's got a lot of poise, and I don't think this is the type of group that's going to be intimidated by being an underdog at home against a team that's had a lot of success. I think that Ron Rivera will have them in a position believing they can win, and I think that's half the battle. So, I mean, I'm not going to I'm not going to tell you who's going to win the game because if I knew that, I probably wouldn't be talking. I'd be in a better spot <laughs> than calling the game. Uh, but I do think that it's going to be a good game. The weather could be a factor. I think that might help. Washington a little bit so you know I think we're going to have a good one on Sunday yeah they give you those fancy uh CBS sports uh, famous coats Do they give you like rain gear too with the, the CBS eye on it you know I'm pretty lucky where I don't I'm usually undercover uh yeah. the sideline reporter that has to fend for themselves a yeah. little bit so I'm hopefully AJ is uh well covered on the sideline AJ Ross yeah we'll have to you know talk talk to Sean uh and Charlie and be like hey take care of our girl down there because it could get <laughs> it could get nasty and then last thing I feel like Andrew last year when we had you on the show before that Tennessee game like a lot of the Snyder stuff had obviously bubbled up at that point and I remember asking you uh, pointedly like how much of this is a story for you guys as you you know whether it's during your open or during the game now that we're on the other side of that coin and you have 175 Washington alums coming back for this game this weekend, how much do you guys talk about the turnaround, the larger context of the game uh, versus you know just just trying to stick to the game itself, especially when it's it's much happier to not have to just stick to the game than it was last year? Well, I mean, based on what I've read and what I saw week one and, and just the feeling right now, I think the environment and the atmosphere is a part of the storyline. I mean, not, not as much as Josh Harris and what he's going to do with the team, more as, hey, we're in the game right now and this place is loud and Buffalo has to go to a silent count and they're jumping off you know, false starts. I mean, I, I, you know, I think that could be a part of the game and certainly that becomes part of the broadcast as well. But, uh, you know, I'm just excited to go there for a game where I think that, you know, Buffalo always travels well, right? So there are going to be a lot of Buffalo fans there, but I think that there's going to be more Washington fans there for sure than there were last year when I was there for Tennessee. So kind of what I root for is a close game and a good atmosphere. And I've been pretty lucky the first two games, our crew, we were in Minnesota week one. I mean, that atmosphere is unbelievable. And then last week in Cincinnati was their home opener, a good crowd against Baltimore. So I think we're going to have another good atmosphere here on Sunday. We'll see what happens with the weather. But um, I think it's going to be a part of the broadcast because I think the fans are going to bring it. Yeah, no, I, I certainly think so as well. I'm planning on going, so hopefully I'll see you at FedEx Field on Sunday. I hope so, Craig. Always good talking to you, pal. You as well. Thanks, man. That's Andrew Catalan with us here on the Hoffman Show. Another fine Anthony. You know, you know where he went to school. Where, where did where did he go? He's a part of the Orange Mob, the the Syracuse Mafia, that the New House Mafia. Mafia. Good gracious! Are we gonna have to take away your degree? <laughs> I just haven't said it in so long. The New House Mafia. That's that is what he is a part of. There's a funny. It's such an inside joke, like radio that no one would care, uh, like story that I have with Catalan that I'll tell you during the break. If you think it like is actually funny to someone who's not in the business, I'll tell it on the air. But I actually think it would just sound super lame if I told it on the air. But I will tell you the story in the break. Uh, and then when we get back, we'll preview Thursday Night Football. So that's what we're going to do. It's the Hoffman Show on the Team 980, streaming live on YouTube and always live on the free Odyssey app. What's up, kiddos? It's your boy Clinton Yates from ESPN. It's the Hoffman Show on the Team 980. Tell your mama I said what's up.